Now, there are several difficult scriptures in the book of James, and we're going to analyze them finally, briefly, and we're going to explain them once and for all. In James chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, it says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Now many believe that God tempts men with evil. However, although it is usually used in the sense of proving by testing or testing under trial, as we can see in James chapter 1 verse 2 verse 12 verse 13 and 14, the word tempt can be translated enticed to sin or solicit to sin. Examples of enticement or solicitation to sin are found in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1 through 6 and in 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 and 4. These examples are associated with Satan, not with God. Now here in James chapter 1 verse 13 and 14, it could be better translated as the following. Let no man say when he is enticed to sin, I am enticed of God, for God cannot be enticed to sin with evil, neither does he entice any man. But every man is enticed or tempted to sin when he is drawn away by his own desires or his own lusts. Because, you know, when we lust after something, we are doing it ourselves. After we have conceived lusts in our own minds, those lusts lead us to commit sin, as we read in James chapter 1 verse 15. God made us his begotten children with his word of truth and wants us to be the first fruits of his family. We read that in James chapter 1 verse 18. He therefore would not entice us to sin and turn away from him and thereby not qualify to be a part of his family. This is consistent with Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 7. In this world, we have the choice of whether to follow and worship God as he commands and receive the blessings that result, or we can choose to follow the ways of this world, the enticements of Satan, and our own lusts to receive the adversity of, or affliction, evil, that results from breaking God's law. And breaking God's laws in plural. And it is our choice. In James chapter 4, verse 4, we have the following. Here is another difficult scripture. You adulterers and adulteresses, know you not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Now, some use uh, this verse to prove that the fellowship that is actually that the followers of Christ, so those who are in fellowship with Christ, so they use this verse to prove that the followers of Christ should totally avoid those who are still of this world. In other words, that they should completely be outside of any association with people in the world. Well, the Bible tells the followers of Christ that anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. That's what it says in James chapter 4 and verse 4. So this scripture does not mean that the followers of Christ should totally avoid those still of the world. It says anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world. Now Jesus was a friend to people of the world without being friendly with the world's ungodly ways as we can read in Matthew chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. He loved the people without desiring to do what was contrary to God's way. This is what James was referring to by the, by the word friend. Now, the Apostle Paul also was quick to clarify that the followers of Christ should not isolate themselves from the, quote, people of the world, end of the quote, or people of this world, end of the quote. At least in their daily lives and businesses, the followers of Christ encounter people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters, as it has been listed in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. To avoid completely such people and problems, wrote Paul, the followers of Christ would have to leave this world. Now, the true followers of Christ are to be good neighbors and exemplify the principle of love, as we read in Mark chapter 12, verse 31. 
they show they are not of the world by loving their enemies as well. If you, this is quote from Matthew chapter 5 verse 47, if you greet only your brothers, what are you doing more than the others? That's what Jesus asked his disciples. Do not even pagans do that. This is from Matthew 5 verse 47. A disdainful or hateful approach to people identifies one as being of the world. But Jesus calls his followers out of the world to a higher standard. He says in Matthew 5 verse 48, Be perfect therefore, he says, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Today it is not the riches, but the cares of this world, the struggling to stay afloat, that threatens to overcome the followers of Christ. So we should care about something called worldliness, given the times we live in. So once again, it is not the riches, but the cares of this world, the struggling to stay afloat that threatens to overcome the followers of Christ. And then finally in James chapter 5, well, it won't be the final, we'll have about, in, in, in chapter 5 we have about two difficult scriptures that we need to understand. So let's first go to James chapter 5 verse 12. Which says, but, but above all things, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea, and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Now some have questions about whether or not it is permissible for a follower of Christ to swear by an oath. Well, the answer is that he should not. Because Jesus himself said, this is quote from Matthew 5, verse 34 to 37, New King James Version. Jesus himself said, I say to you, do not swear at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by earth, for it is his footstool, nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, nor shall you swear by your head, because you cannot make one hair white or black, but let your yes be yes and your no, no, for whatever is more than this is from the evil one. Again, this is called from Matthew chapter 5, verse 34 through 37. So the Bible is very clear on this point. This is now from James chapter 5, verse 12. But above all things, my brethren, swear not, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest you fall into condemnation. So the scriptural instruction is not meant to imply that oaths by themselves are sin. To emphasize that we mortal human beings are often powerless to fulfill even our strongest intentions, God commands us not to swear by his name in any oath. Failing to fulfill an oath would be taking God's name in vain, which of course is contrary to the commandment of God, the third commandment of God. Therefore, a follower of Christ should simply say yes or no according to what one honestly believes to be true, even in legal matters. Well, in the case of the United States, the law of the United States permits affirmation, that is saying yes or no without raising the hand to swear. How could other people in other cultures deal with that? I don't know, I guess. It's all up to individual choice and the individual uh, circumstances. Then we have James chapter 5 and verse 15, interesting uh, verse about those who fall sick. Uh, he says, And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Now many tend to believe, like Job's friends, that all sickness is the direct result of sin. There is also time and chance. James states in verse 15, And, and if his sickness was caused by some sin, the Lord will forgive him. Notice the word if. Now, there are several reasons why people get sick. <laughs> One reason is psychological reasons. At least 50% of hospital beds are occupied by people with a psychosomatic illnesses that is self-induced. The second reason is to demonstrate God's power. In John chapter 9, verse 3, we have the example of the man born blind. When Jesus was asked who sinned, Jesus replied, neither one of them. This man is blind in order that the glory and the power of God might be demonstrated. The third reason for 
people getting sick is violation of physical law. A car accident, falling out of a ladder or falling out of a tree create injuries. If our bodies knowingly or, unknow or, or unknowingly violate a physical law, then disease, pain, accidents and decay are the natural results. And another reason for people getting ill is Satan's attacks. Now demonstrated in the book of Job, indeed, for no reason whatsoever Satan inflicted boils on Job's body. Now in the end, God healed Job. And the last reason why people get sick is committing by committing sin. Paul tells us that because of taking the Passover in an unworthy manner, or very lightly, would be the cause, you know, would be sin. And for this cause, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 30, for this cause many are weak and sickly. Now the most practical application of James' admonition is to sort out in one's mind where God is working, where God's church is, and where God's elders are, so that we may call upon the elders of the church in the case of various illnesses, if we fall ill, or if some kind of illnesses befall us.